All right. So today's class, we're going to go over some cribbing. We're going to learn how to properly crib and see what's kind of cribbing that we have here at KSD. So it's more kind of geared towards what we have here, uh, but there's also going to be some stuff that we don't have here that we're going to cover. Um, so the objectives that we're going to cover today is we're going to discuss safety issues with the cribbing. Um, we're going to go over our overall goal of cribbing and then learn about the different types of cribbing and how to properly use the cribbing. So first, the safety concerns with the cribbing. Um, depending on your surface that you're going to use or what type of cribbing you use, you got slips, trips, and hazards. you got stuff that's going to be laying around. Um, we're also going to learn what the load capacity is. How much are we trying to lift and load? Um, are there any contaminants that are spilled and how does that affect our cribbing? Do we just stack the cribbing or is there a method to the madness and proper technique on how we do that? Um, so those are some concerns to ensure that we're properly stabilizing everything. Um, again, the goal is to properly stabilize our object correctly. We want to ensure that everyone within what we're stabilizing is safe, whether it be a vehicle, a building, or any of that. And then just kind of a little saying that everybody has, if you lift an inch, you're gonna crib an inch. So something to kind of think about is, with all this cribbing, there's a lot of different ways to potentially do it, is who, who decides the proper techniques of procedures for cribbing? Well, it's actually the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers are the authoritative source of information on how to construct the cribbing systems. So here we just have some different pictures of different types of cribbing and what cribbing can be used for. So we've got a lot of lumber cribbing here. Uh, they're utilizing that for a bridge, so that's probably going to be a little bit more permanent than what a lot of these others are going to be. We've got some auto crib that's going to obviously be utilized for a vehicle. Auto crib could also potentially be used for some small structural stuff. Um, it's just something not, for the cost of it. It's not something you're going to want to leave for for permanent. Uh, we've also got some plastic cribbing up here in the top right, using a concrete pumper truck to try and level it out, that way they can pump properly. And then there's also some wedges and step cribbing utilized on the vehicle as well. So again, depending on whether it's being left behind or something that is expensive and we need to keep it to remain in service is going to kind of depend to what type of cribbing that you're going to use. So these are the different types of cribbings that we have here at KFD. We don't have wood readily available in, in station, but we also have a Home Depot, we have a Menards. So the good thing about wood cribbing is it's something we can just go grab off the shelf, we can make exactly what we need and utilize that. The plastics, we've got step chocks, we've got uh, regular turtle tile cribbing, we've got two by fours, four by fours, we got wedges. Um, and then we also have the auto crib. There's two different auto cribs. There's a, we'll go over that. There's a 17 and a 13 inch. We'll kind of touch base on that later in through here. So wood cribbing, it's cheaper than plastic. It's easily accessible. Again, we can go to Home Depot, Menards, Kirkville Lumber, somewhere, any local lumber, and cut out exactly what we're gonna need. We can grab a two by four or a four by four. Um, but also something you gotta realize too is wood, isn't necessarily the actual size of what is advertised. So a four by four is not actually gonna be four by four. Um, you got variants of wood, which I've got some examples right there next to it. Um, you got hardwoods and you have softwoods, and that's gonna to determine too as to the load that can hold. So wood is, wood is ever changing because a red maple may have a certain workload when it's dry compared to when it has, when it's completely soaked in water. So there's not necessarily any given workload because it's constantly varying depending on humidity, um, the actual moisture that's already inside that wood, and all of that stuff. Um, so there's a lot of variants of wood. Another bad thing about wood is when it gets wet, it's pretty slippery. There's not really much to grab. So that's us. So we'll be back. <laughs> 